Hey, George. Hello, Andy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, you're Sorry welcome. About, uh, Thanks for inviting me. So, um, um, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Um, my name is George Phillip. I am a uh, social studies teacher, fifth and sixth grade, uh, at the Stanley Clark School in South Bend, Indiana. Okay. And um, my, my understanding, understanding you use the flip classroom model? model? I do, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, just a few, a few questions, questions about that. that. Um, what made you choose to do the flip classroom model? Um, I wanted to do the flip classroom model because I was looking for um, kind of a more engaging way um, for my students to be active learners. Um, the model I was using was one that was, you know, kind of passed on from social studies teacher to social studies teacher, you know, the, the lecture. Um, mm -hmm. But I, um, I tried to infuse more, um, more group work, more group projects uh, into that and try to take myself out of it as much as I could. And I'd actually gotten my lectures down to like under 15 minutes. Um, but that was still 15 minutes that the students could use uh, in class. So I was just kind of Playing around with different ideas of, of what to do uh, to make sure that my students were fully engaged. Okay, and how long have you been doing it? Uh, this is about my third year. Sorry, what was that? Uh, about three years. Okay. Um, did you have any troubles when you first started? Um, not really. Um, I had one parent that kind of gave uh, a little pushback to it um, because they wanted, you know, they said, you know, your job is, is a teacher and you're there to teach my child, you know, not for them to sit around in class and not do anything. And I said, well, your child won't be sitting around in class not doing anything just because yeah. they're not, you know, taking notes while I'm talking doesn't mean that they're not going to be learning. Um, so that was really the only negative pushback I got from it. Um, so in three years, you know, one parent, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. yeah. Was, was the administration, administration for it or... or? Uh, they, they were. Um, you know, I'm fortunate enough that my school, um, you know, they allow us to kind of do what's what we think is best for our students. So um, we were able to, um, or I was able to um, kind of implement it. And, you know, I just had to make sure that I was sharing the information with the parents so that they understood what I was doing, how I would be doing it, so on and so forth. So. Are other teachers at your school use this model, or do they? Um, I have one other teacher um, that uses kind of like a flipped mastery model, um, where okay. the video for instruction um, and then you know testing and so on and so forth. I'm the only one at my school that uses um, the explore flip apply method. Um, so in our entire school, there's really only two teachers who flip their classrooms. Can you uh, describe the explore flip? Method? Sure. Um, so within Explore Flip Apply, uh, it was developed by Ramsey Musalem, uh, who is a AP chemistry teacher out in uh, San Francisco. And he was trying to kind of find a way um, to have student inquiry drive the learning process. And that is something that I was always trying to toy around with. Um, so after doing some research, I found out like what he was doing. And so during the Explore uh, phase, I'm sorry. Um, students are doing more. Um, it's called like guided inquiry. Um, so, like for for instance, in his class, in the chemistry class, you know, he would show the kids like you know chemical reactions, or you know, stick a light bulb into a solution and it would light up. And and so then, like in social studies, um, I would um, I use a lot of like images, maps, um, snippets of videos to kind of hook the students. You know, it's, it's part of the explore phase is more of hooking the students, activating their prior knowledge. Um, and then so, you know, depending upon that, how well they are, are hooked or how well they understand the material, we then kind of move into having them apply it and do, you know, kind of do some research, um, you know, really take on the onus of their own learning uh, instead of me telling them what they need to know they go out and, and look for the information to to, to apply it um, so and then the flip phase is more of the videos address like misconceptions that come up in class they're not the model of instruction um, where like your flip mastery you usually watch the video before coming to class um, and then in the class is part of putting that together 
putting that information together. So the the flip can be used, or if your students all understand it, then you don't really need to put that video component to it. Um, and then really the apply phase is just letting students be creators of content. Uh, so like with my kids, um, they like to make a lot of iMovies. So, you know, around the general central topic that we're talking about, you know, they'll create an iMovie uh, about it or uh, a keynote presentation. And, you know, those all have limits, um, plays, debates, you know, there's all sorts of things that you can do in social studies to help drive that learning further. Um, so that's kind of what it is. And, and sometimes uh, in the apply phase, you know, we do tests and quizzes too, um, just to help teach them that skill that they'll need. You know, it's not a big part of my curriculum for tests and quizzes, but it's something I throw in there just so that they um, are well-versed in those. Cool. So, so uh, do you describe, describe like, like a, a typical day, day or week, week whatever, um, of me, your classroom? Sure. So uh, a typical week is um, we'll introduce a topic, uh, let's say like, uh, at the beginning of the year, um, we always talk about the five themes of geography. So what I'll do is um, I'll have the students watch a little video um, from YouTube or something of, you know, showing uh, this farm in like South Dakota or something and showing the farmers interacting with the farm and land and everything like that. And, um, you know, so that's the explore phase. And part of that is, um, you know, I stop it and I just ask them, you know, what are they doing in this film? And so the kids have to, you know, um, think of, think about and share what, what, what they're doing in the video. And then I tell them, all right, you know, in this video are the five themes of geography, name them. And so then the kids in, in their groups start talking about, you know, what are the five themes? And you know, I've done this for three years and no of the six classes that have done it, no class has gotten them yet. And so then I have a video prepared for them already that goes through the five themes. And I'm like, all right, you know, your homework tonight is, is to watch this video, take some notes with it. Um, and then bring that back to class and, and then we'll get into it. Uh, and then so, you know, that's usually like day one. Um, and then they watch the video. And then the next day we talk about like what was in the video. Um, you know, they kind of go through and debrief um, about what was in it. You know, talk about the different five themes. And I say, all right, in your groups, I'm going to sign each of you a theme. And then you need to um, make a game to teach uh, our second graders about your theme. And you have to remember that, you know, your audience are second graders and they know nothing about the five themes of geography. And I say you have about three or four days to do this and then we'll go down and teach them the game. And so then that's what they do. So really each kind of unit of study takes um, or each project takes anywhere from like a, a week to three weeks uh, to complete depending on... Um, the depth of the of the project so cool. um, your students seem to enjoy this method more than a traditional method uh yes uh just, <laughs> yeah um my students who leave who leave me uh because i have them for two years in fifth and sixth grade uh and then when they go in seventh and eighth grade um i heard the the teacher the history teacher up there he's more uh lectured lectured note base um, which is fine, you know, that, that's, his, that's his gig, and especially since most of our kids are going off to um, high schools that the teachers are going to be more that way. Um, they, always, they always come back and tell me, oh, we wish he did more projects like you did. We wish that, you know, he did that. And, you know, whenever I see kids in the hallways, I always ask them, or they'll always be like, oh, Mr. Phillip, remember that project that we did about this or that? And, you know, and it, sometimes it's like the smallest ones that we do, but because it was a project and not a test, they seem to understand and relate and can recall the information better than, than if they didn't. You know, I'm like, oh, what was, you know, that test question about, you know, the eight pillars of, um, of Hinduism. And so they'll be like, what? what are you talking about? I don't remember. I just remember I hated it. So. That's awesome. Um, and then and then my last, last question, question is, do you have any advice, advice for teachers that are thinking about doing, doing it or college kids like, like me who are studying chem educators? Words of flip classroom, classroom, like you. Any words of Um, I would say there there's the school of thought of that you should start small and then you know kind of work your work your way up. Um, I went head into it, and I'll I don't you know I went full out flip. You know I pretty much said all right kids you know we're not using textbook anymore and just use pamphlets and packets uh, that I created for them. Um, and it was just you know I went 
head into it. And I think if you're organized enough to do it that way and brave enough to do it that way, I guess, I would say go full for it. If you're a little bit hesitant about it, flip like a lesson or a unit um, and then see how it works. Because for some kids, it may work well. For others, it may not. Um, and, you know, part of being a teacher is figuring out what works well for your students. So I just, you know, take it from there. All right, well, that's, that's all, all I have. have. Okay. I appreciate you taking time out your day to meet up with me. Well, I appreciate the, the invite. So it's always great to talk to, you know, an aspiring new teacher. I wish at, at my school this had existed before when I was, be, you know, starting to become a teacher. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, the topic, topic interests me so much. So this is awesome. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So, all right.